Hey there, I'm Meg and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create emails on Flowdesk. So let's head on over there. So once you log into Flowdesk, you're automatically brought to the emails tab, which is super convenient when you're creating emails. Now you'll notice that I already have a bunch of emails already created, but if you're starting from scratch, here's what you do. Head on over to new email. Wait patiently. And then Flowdesk has a lot of really awesome templates that you can choose from. If you fall in love with the features of multiple templates, don't worry, you can always add all of these elements later. So I recommend choosing the template that has the most elements that you're looking for and then adding in the other ones later. And if it's super overwhelming to go through all of these templates, which I understand, Flowdesk also categorizes them by goal. So let's say that you have some news to share. So you have a blog post. These are all of the email templates that Flowdesk considers newsworthy. So this is one of my favorites. So we're going to go here. The nice thing is you can check out the template before committing. And we're just going to go back just to show you how that works. So again, I just scroll down. Where to go? Whoops. I guess you have to click share news again. And then click on view details. And if you don't want to go with that template, click back to templates. If not, if you're ready to go, click customize. Before we do that, however, you can also see how this template looks on mobile, which is pretty snazzy. Flowdesk is responsive to desktop and mobile. So we're going to click customize. Wait patiently. Here we go. So the template automatically adjusts to certain elements of your brand. So for example, at the top here is a logo block and it automatically plops in your logo as long as you've added your logo on the back end. And if you haven't done anything on the back end, if you just created your Flowdisk account, check out my link down below. I am recording a series of getting started with Flowdesk videos. And the first video in the series is called Getting Started with Flowdesk. It will help you do everything you need to do on the back end as well as get started on your lists and move an email list from one platform to Flowdesk. So continuing on, looking at this template, we have some text blocks. This is called a layout block. So Flowdesk works on the block system, which means that you can drag and drop your blocks. And then whenever you click on a block, this information pops up. So we're just gonna keep going. You can see how it looks. And then again, there's a logo block and then these are social media. This is a social media block. And all of these links are automatically linked to your platforms as long as you did that on the back end. So you don't have to manually link from in here, which is snazzy. So the first thing that we're going to do, which I find helpful, is to adjust the global style. So this is where you adjust the font colors for your body text. So for this text, layout blocks are kind of their own little thing. So whatever we do here only really affects this type of body text. So you can change the font color. You'll see these are my brand colors. If you haven't done that already, check out my Getting Started with Flowdesk video. I show you how to add your brand colors. So we're going to click that gray and then link color. Looks like there's nothing linked in here, but if you add a link, a text link, then it will change to this color. And then your backdrop color is the, this section. And then your canvas color is this section. And I'm just going to go back to the way we had it. So you can click undo, which is helpful. Okay, so now that we have our global styles set, let's start from the top and work our way down. So my logo is looking a little small. I wanna make it a tad bigger, so I just clicked on it and then you'll see this little triangle in the corner. If you hover over that and drag, you can make the logo bigger. And then if you click on this text block, you can highlight it and you can change the font. Here, there are all kinds of fonts on Flowdesk. I'm gonna go with Courier. And then you can even change the size. 
can change the color here. This doesn't throw off your global styles. Oh, and also you can change the font. Oops. Sometimes you have to re-highlight it. You can change the font around. Some fonts don't let you do it. Here we go. Oh, you know what? Sometimes what happens is if the font is already set to bold, then whatever you do here doesn't really make a difference. So just kind of play around with it. And I'm going to highlight this again because there's a couple more options that you can do with fonts. So you can adjust the alignment. You can change to all caps. And then spacing is a super handy tool. You can adjust the line height. And you can also adjust the letter spacing, which is cool. And then always notice that there are a couple of other block specific options on these tabs. Doesn't really apply to this block because this is a text block, but this is where you find that, that stuff. So for example, when we head on down to this layout block, this is where we change the layout. So this is if you liked the elements of another template, this is how you add them in. You can either change one of these layouts or if you want to add another one, you click the plus and then you would select layout, which is eluding me. There it is. And then this is also where you add photos, another logo block, a video block. Now notice with the video block, you have to have a link. So you have to paste in a Vimeo or a YouTube link. You can't just embed the video. You can't just upload the video to Flowdesk. And since we're here, there's Instagram. This sh would show your Instagram feed, which is pretty cool. And then there is a text block. I've never used a link bar but this is if you want to have multiple text links side by side, which is pretty cool. Buttons, a line divider, a spacer, social links, which are, it's just like a social block here. And then a footer, you don't really need to add that and your address, you don't really need to add that because those are automatically plopped down here. So let's go back to working with our layout. So I'm going to click on this layout. So the first thing you can do is you can change the layout if you'd like. Let's do, let's do that one. And then link, this is where you add, so it says read more here. This is where you add that link. So whenever somebody clicks anywhere on this layout, they're brought to the link. They don't have to click here. They can click here. They can click here. They can click anywhere. So this entire layout block is what's linked. So this is where you add that link. And then this is where you can find additional block settings. So flip is super handy. So let's say that you had two of these. You can flip one of them. So that way it kind of stacks nicely. And then this is text settings. So if you don't want to show the header, which is this right here, you can turn that off. And then show button, you can play around with that. And then you can change the background color of the layout if you'd like. And then padding is how much space you want at the top, bottom, left, right. And then accessibility is super handy for visually impaired users. So you would type in a descriptor of the layout. So it would be like, photo of coffee cup and then when somebody is looking at your newsletter if they have it set up that the computer reads to them what is on the screen it would describe the image so you don't need to add the text because the computer can automatically scan the text you want to add information about the, mostly the photo here in the layout so that's pretty handy and then if you want to edit this text specifically, you click in and then same as what we did above, you can adjust the text settings from here. And yes, you do have these options, but these are still tied to the main block, not to this text specifically. So you can edit each little section of text. And then with the button, click on the button and this is where you get the button settings. So you have color settings here. You can even change the button shape. 
and you can change the position of the button. You can change border and sizing down here. And then if you click on the text and if you highlight it, then you get the font option. And this is where you change this line of text right here. So you can also drag around elements like we did before. Unfortunately, you cannot add elements side by side. You can click and you can delete an element. Let's say that you get a block just how you like it and you want to have another block very similar. You click duplicate and there you go. And then you can just drag around. So that is the gist of creating an email. Let's say that you get the email exactly how you want it and you're ready to go. First, what I like to do is look at the mobile preview up here just to see how the email looks. Make sure that everything is legible. And then you can also click the preview here. And then sometimes you can click and test the link, but what I recommend doing, because that's not always reliable, I click on this paper airplane here and I send myself a test email. And once I get that test email in my inbox, that is where I test all of the links. So you'll notice that the subject line automatically pops up here. We change the subject line in the next window. So we'll get there in a minute. And let's say that you're super happy with how this email came out and you're going to want to use this template in the future. You can save it to favorites. I don't do this method. I have a different method that I do, which I'll show you a little bit later. All right, so let's say that you are ready to send this email. You've tested the links, you are happy with how it looks, so let's move on. You're going to click Next up here, and then this just confirms your from information. You can change the from name here if you'd like, but this you have to change more on the back end. Click Continue, and you'll notice that there are three sections here, and we're under Choose Audience. This is where you change your subject line. And what's cool is you can also click that little happy icon and you can add an emoji, which is pretty snazzy. Preview text I always recommend adding because this shows up on mobile view. I haven't really seen it show up on desktop. But what happens is when somebody receives the email, they'll see your subject in bold and then underneath it, there's a bit of preview text. And if you don't add your preview text, then the Flowdesk automatically shows the first line of your email, which sometimes is kind of confusing because it doesn't really go with your subject line. So I like to add, it's like a subheader. And then continue, and this is where you choose your audience. So you click add segments. And then you can also exclude if you want, but usually you just focus on what to include. Click save. And then we're going to click continue. Whoops. Oh yes, I have nobody on my test list. That's why. You have to have people on your list. So we're gonna do, we'll just do all subscribers. There we go. And then it tells you how many people are on that list. Then we're gonna click continue. And here we go. Now it's letting us click continue. So you can either send the email now or you can schedule it for later. I always recommend scheduling emails. I like to batch and do a bunch of emails at one time. So you can choose your date. You can choose a custom. I usually do a custom time. I don't usually listen to these. I kind of gauge my audience and do a little bit of split testing to see when people tend to open emails the most. And I find 5 o'clock a.m. is a good time, at least for me. And then it confirms. And also, if you haven't sent yourself a test email, you have another opportunity to do that here. And let's say you are ready to go and schedule that email. You can click schedule, which I'm not going to do because I don't want this to send. Or even if you're not ready to schedule it, click on the Flowdesk logo. And then you'll see the email show up in the first position. So right now it says draft because I didn't schedule it, but let's say that you did schedule it, you would see that right here. You would see the scheduled information. And even if you did schedule an email, you can click edit and you can revise it. And this is how it, it looks. It's exactly like what we did. Uh, you'll also notice here that I did add the first name. So whenever somebody receives this email, it'll say, hey Meg. 
or hey whoever like whatever their name is and if it doesn't like if I don't have their name in my list then it shows there and how you add that is you click the at and then you can add their first name their last name their email address so let's say we want to add their last name and then if the last name if we don't have their last name on our list you can just write something else so it would say instead of like let's say it didn't have my name so instead of saying hey Meg Brown it would say hey there friend so let's say that you have edited that email you've tweaked it however you want you're just gonna go through the motions again just gonna verify that everything is correct and then just click schedule again and here we are so you'll notice that Flowdesk displays emails based on how they were like the order in which you modified them so we last modified this one and then before that this is that test email that we made you can also choose how to sort your emails if you'd like and I do have a tutorial coming on how to organize your Flowdesk account, including how to organize your emails so you can find them faster in the future. And the reason why it's helpful to organize emails is so that way when you do get an email set up and you really like it, you can duplicate it in the future. So we did the whole favorite thing. So when you click a new email, if you have a list of favorites, you'd be able to choose them from here. But I like just duplicating emails that I've already created. So in order to duplicate an email, you click the ellipsis at the top of the email that you want to duplicate and then just click duplicate and it shows up first here. And then the first thing that I do is I rename that email so I don't get confused because it has the same exact name as the one that we duplicated. So my system is to change, whoops, very sensitive I like to change it to the date that I plan on sending out that email so the first thing I would do is change the date and then if I am sending it to a different list this is the name of the list and then I have a in parentheses a little trigger that informs me what that email is about so that makes it super easy when I'm scanning through my emails to tell okay so yes I do remember this email it was about this I remember the layout so then I can determine if that's one that I want to duplicate and then if you want to delete it you just click that ellipsis delete if you want to rename it you can also click rename or you can just click on the line like I did earlier and then organize will go into in another tutorial So that is how you create an email on Flowdesk. I hope it helps. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series on getting started with Flowdesk. The next one coming up is how to create a welcome sequence. So when somebody subscribes to your email newsletter, they're automatically sent with a series of welcome emails. I also have a tutorial on how to create forms that get people on your email list in the first place. And coming up soon will be that how to organize your Flowdesk account tutorial. If you're looking to learn even more about email marketing, check out my Expand with Email online course. I've linked that down below. It explains what to include in an email newsletter, how to get people to open them, as well as how to get people on your list in the first place. So check those out and I will see you in the next video.